wish it to be known that the loss of our dear friend and the deep respect we have for his family, together with the sense of undivided harmony felt by ourselves and our manager, have led us to decide that we could not continue as we were. Signed, Led Zeppelin. But Farisi wouldn't comment on whether that means the band members will never again perform. I wouldn't want to speculate on it. I don't, uh, it doesn't mean that they can't, they won't come back in a different form, but the group as it is, I guess, is no longer. From what we've been able to find out, that may mean that Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, and John Paul Jones may be joined by one or more new musicians, and that this new band under a new name would perform. But that won't happen for at least a few months. What did we get today from London, where Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, and John Paul Jones have announced that Led Zepp is now history, that out of deference to the late John Bonham, the remaining members of the band will never again perform under that name, which is not to say that they won't reform with one or two new members and create a new group with a new name, but that won't happen for at least a few months. Still, New York City rock promoter Ron Delsner tells the source that he thinks Led Zeppelin is far from gone. People have been down that retirement path again, and if you read between the lines, they can't continue uh, uh, as it was in the past, but they might continue, I feel, uh, on a whole new different plane. So I think uh, they might reorganize. I can't say when, but I do not feel strongly that they will retire. I feel that there will be a Led Zeppelin. Another new from what? I have a love and hate relationship with 80s Poe Zeppelin material. I think they're great songs, regular stuff, and bad ideas. They entered new grounds where competition lost its meaning. They were not competing against popular kings and queens of the 80s. No, they were competing against themselves. An artistic confrontation of questions overdue. John Paul Jones was born a musician, is a musician, and will always be a musician. He handled the 80s with grace focusing on his craft and the natural low profile of a genius. Jimmy and Robert became victims of their own onstage personas and the inevitable pressure of stardom and denial gospels of crowds, fans and obsession. The 80s seemed to be an existential quest while the breeze of absence silently triggered past memories. Their 80s catalog took me years to understand. It's like a gift they give you on your birthday. It's not really what you wanted but you gotta be grateful and say thank you. Their 80s material woke me up. It opened my eyes to realize this is not Led Zeppelin. It can't be, but I wanted to. And this is the hardest emotion to remove from the listening experience. Many of these songs were lost in time. One would almost want to revisit the music, not knowing who Led Zeppelin were. My favorite 80s album from the former Zepps? You guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> no, it's not Frank Stallone but Scream for Help by John Paul Jones. The record is so good, it's out of print, and I need that CD in my collection. I have a fever, and maybe that new prescription is a copy of Scream for Help. Kudos to Robert Plant for facing the media game with various solo albums in the industrial complex of ratings, sales, and money. What were the 80s for Robert Plant? Revenge? A coping mechanism? Inspiration? While he didn't achieve uh, Phil Collins' solo career success, he paid the price for being himself. He went back to his teenage years of searching, and the question remains, what did he find in the 80s? 1981 to 1989 evolved from a flooding river of sorrow back into the ocean of acceptance. The purpose of this series is to compile their 80s stuff, which seems to be all over the place. Gather all the material into one narrative that gives us a better perspective on these strange times. A no man's land of codependence, letting go and simultaneous release. For the surviving members, the 80s were another day at the office. Or maybe, another day to be alive and grateful. Grateful they didn't leave behind their families, nor the fans, tragically, at age 32. Of course I am in the 80s, I have my own career. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so it was very hard to work with the wedges and stuff, but we know. I'd like to introduce you some friends of mine to you. You are Mr. Robert Plant, Mr. Jimmy Page, Mr.
Rick Townsend. I'm backstage, and like I said, we're going to talk to Robert Plant in a minute, but everybody's here. Bob Geldof is standing right here. How are you, sir? The last days of 1980 saw Peter Grant dealing with lots of backstabbing, especially from lawyers. People looking to get a piece of the band, as well as pushing for a reformation with another drummer. Eventually, them crook vultures stopped circling. Record companies started the new decade coming to terms with the aging rock star. It was a confusing time for many. Chris Squire and Paige met at a Christmas party back in December at Phil Carson's house. Yes was one of Carson's bands with Atlantic and had just broken up after touring their latest album, Drama. Steve Howe and Jeff Downs left to form Asia with fellow prog musicians Carl Palmer of ELP and John Wetton of the recently disbanded UK supergroup featuring Eddie Jobson and Terry Bozio. Bassist Chris Squire and drummer Alan White were looking for a new band. The studio jam on January 4th led to a new project and several demo recordings. Chris Squire's father suggested the band's name, XYZ, as in XES Zeppelin. Peter Grant heard the new material and invited Squire to his mansion. It was a fun conversation. I said, XYZ, it's a great name, isn't it? Peter said, hmm, but the Y comes before the Z. That means yes comes before Zeppelin. I said, but you can't have XCY, Peter. It has to be XYZ, or it won't make sense, Peter said, but that means yes comes before Zeppelin.
Yes had once approached Grant for management. They went for the same reason Queen, ELP, and Bud Company did, because he was a powerhouse. Jimmy Page felt XYZ needed a singer. Finding one was a major roadblock. Jimmy said he'd get Robert Plant. He kept saying Robert was interested. I think it was too soon after Bonzo. Eventually the whole thing just fizzled out. With XYZ's future in limbo, Squire and White recorded a Christmas single called Run With The Fox in October 1981 before forming Cinema with guitarist Trevor Rabin and keyboard player Tony Kay. Page was asked to write a film score by director Michael Winner. His 1974 movie Death Wish, starring Charles Bronson, was a box office hit. It was time for a sequel. Winner's producers had singer Isaac Hayes ready to record a soundtrack. His label wanted to revive his career and agreed to their singer working for free. Winner wanted Jim Page. He had lived next to one of Jimmy's houses for years, but never met him. He didn't know much about rock music, but knew Led Zeppelin were big. Winner called Peter Grant who said Page was unreachable for 10 days. Winner insisted Grant made the call. Jimmy said yes. What happened next is an extraordinary move by Winner. Not even Charles Bronson as Paul Kersey could have pulled this off. You gotta listen to this. I never thought about it that way. It could be true. I said Isaac Hayes is doing the music for free and Canon Films is getting a share of the album and the publishing. Peter Grant then said the most amazing thing. Well. How do I beat free? I said joking. Jimmy Page has to pay to do our music. To my amazement, Peter said, how much? Peter did the most absurd deal. Winner told him all you have to do is beat nothing. So Peter said, I'll give you $100,000. So Peter paid for Jimmy to do the soundtrack. This stuck in Jimmy's throat for a long, long time. Winner later claimed the actual figure was $175,000 plus a greater percentage for Canon Films. A contract was sent to Grant's house. Peter refused to sign it. Winner was wasting his time. I just left his driver outside. The driver knocked on the door, asked if he could use the toilet. He was told to look somewhere else. Winner called Grant but couldn't reach him. His assistants used every excuse in the book. After two days, Winner threatened to cancel the deal. Peter gave in, but made his point. One day, my doorbell rang. A thin and slightly wooby Jimmy Page had come to see the Death Wish 2 movie in my private cinema. He watched the film and decided where the music should go. He said to me, I am going to my studio. I don't want you anywhere near me. I am going to do it all on my own. 